Hello everybody, um, I'm Esther Sterling and I'm a partner in Harrison Clark Rickabies and head of the Agriculture and Rural Affairs sector. And in our session now, we're going to have a look at the sorts of issues you need to consider first and foremost, if you're thinking of joining in with the family business. Um, I'm going to be presenting today with Mary Wathan. Mary, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Mary Wathan and I'm a partner at Harrison Clark Rickabies, specialising in agricultural property. This session will be split into three and we'll consider each of the main three issues we think you need to consider at this stage. The first stage we'll talk about is perhaps the most important starting point to take stock of the business and where it is today. You really need to have oversight of the whole of that business. You wouldn't invest in somebody else's business unless you had that kind of oversight and you could really take an informed decision. So consider what assets are in the business today and how they're used. Consider who owns what. Um, sometimes problems can arise if there are lots of people involved in joint ownerships and they all have to take joint decisions and they might not agree. It's best to find out at the very start who owns what and make sure they all come with you. In addition to just the assets of the farming business, there's often going to be land and some of that is going to be perhaps jointly owned or indeed rented. Mary, what sort of issues can people find there? Thanks, Esther. Yeah, it's absolutely right that with agricultural businesses, property and land can form a large part of that enterprise. So when you're taking stock, it's really important that you review the position of the property in detail. You need to have visibility in terms of who owns what. If land is owned, um, but you know, potentially by people that aren't involved in the business, then it's really important that you then regulate the business's use of that land to make sure that there aren't any later disputes or issues. Um, there are circumstances as well where land can be rented rather than owned by the, the, the members of the business. And again, it's important that you understand the nature of that relationship to make sure that the, the business is able to continue in the way that you anticipate you are going to be able to. Thanks, Mary. That is really important. I deal with a lot of disputes that concern property or sometimes disputes within family business structures. And um, although things can be often informal agreements within the family, it's really important to have those agreements written down, isn't it? Particularly where you're thinking about instigating some sort of change. Yes, that's right. And the other thing to consider and can often be the case, and sometimes this is overlooked until the last minute, is if there is bank borrowing which is secured against the land and property, you will often need the lender's consent if you're wanting to bring other people into the business or you're wanting to make any changes. So it's really important as part of this taking stock and review process that you involve your relationship manager with the bank to make sure that you can do everything that you hope you're going to be able to do. Um, another sort of member of the team that we would recommend you include in this taking stock process is your accountant. Um, we wouldn't recommend that you go in back to any business, even if it is a, a family business, without reviewing in detail the accounts to make sure that it is a viable business, that it's profitable, that it can actually afford for you to go back into the business and that you're going to be able to take out of it what you need. If you're also looking to make your own capital investments into the business, then you want to make sure that those will be protected in some way and that, that you're going to make a secure investment. Absolutely, Mary, that's quite right. And I think these stages, although they might not sound like the really exciting development of your business and the, the planning that you really want to get onto, which will be where you might take the business next, it's fundamental, isn't it, to start off on the right foot with all of these things and not to overlook them. So what we've talked about so far applies in particular when you're going into an existing family business, but often you'll want to instigate some change in that business and bring your own ideas to fruition. So that brings us on to our next stage. Where do you want to take the farm? How do you plan that? And how do you implement it without problems? So it's important, obviously, to set out your vision and to secure buy-in from everybody else that needs to be involved. You need to consider realistic options, given the return you need from that business, the available investment and the available property, which often does form a bit of a constraint because there will be practical restrictions on what you can do based on what's on the site. For example, planning issues and also access. Mary, what other sorts of issues do people need to think about? Yeah, again, absolutely. Thanks, Esther. In terms of the property, it's important that you look at this in detail um, when you're planning the next stage of your business. So absolutely right. If you're going to change the use, then you need to secure planning consent for that. And we would thoroughly recommend that you do that before you invest too much capital into the business. Obviously, you want to ensure that you are authorised to do what you plan to do at the particular location. 
it, we would also recommend that you check the title to the land of the property in question to see if it's actually bound by any restrictive covenants. Now, those covenants could actually stop you from doing what you plan to do. So it's really important that you're aware of what those are and if they need dealing with, then you deal with them before you implement your new business. And it's also important to check the access to a property. Um, if you're planning to change the use so it goes from a standard farming or agricultural use to perhaps a wedding venue, for example, then this could bring with it problems with, be it with the neighbour or in relation to access. And Esther, you've seen this happen a number of times before, haven't you? I absolutely have. I help a lot of clients in that position. Um, sometimes their, their plans might, as you say, be at quite a, 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 a well-developed stage and, and have carried quite a lot of investment with them. But if they have to cross somebody else's land to get into their um, farm or their new venue, uh, then that access can have restrictions on it. Now, quite often that's never presented a problem because the only use they've put their land to has been agricultural. But if you start a business that isn't agricultural or if the volume or type of the traffic really changes, then the owner of that land and might object. I see a lot of cases like this and often we're able to negotiate an agreement but in the worst cases then a party might seek an injunction and that could stop your business altogether and at the very least you might have quite an expensive dispute so it's certainly something you don't you mustn't overlook. The other issue we can see concerns competing uses for land doesn't it Mary and issues around neighbours. Yes, that's right. There are circumstances where you've got on with your neighbour very happily for a significant number of years whilst you've been farming the land. But as soon as you want to change the use, and we come back to this example of a wedding venue, for example, again, because all of a sudden you see a lot more traffic and noise associated with the property, sometimes there can be conflicting interests. So we would thoroughly recommend that as part of this planning process, you speak with your neighbours and you try and keep everything on an amicable footing. Absolutely right. And I think also consider what your neighbours do as well as what you want to do. It might be, for example, there's a local shoot that's being run that might really interfere with the sort of business you want to run. So definitely consider these issues in the round. Do your research and talk to the neighbours wherever you need to. Thanks, Esther. And I think one other thing to mention as part of this planning process is it's really important, again, that you involve your accountant. You want to make sure that you do all the appropriate tax planning in advance rather than thinking about it afterwards or wishing you'd done things differently. Um, as, as part of that tax advice, they will often recommend that you look at the type of business structures that are involved um, because there may be a, a more tax efficient way of setting up a particular enterprise, particularly if you're doing something outside of the usual farming activity. That's right. And if you haven't already had a look, then do have a look at our other video on this subject too, which covers business structures in particular. Same to our presentation, we're going to talk about the importance of reaching and recording agreements correctly. We've just been talking about tax planning and some business structures. Now, if you've taken that professional advice, it's really important that you act on it and formulate the business properly, both in terms of how it's structured, in terms of how it operates and all of the agreements it has. It's really important that you have written contracts. If parties come to me because they have a problem or think they might have a problem, the first thing I'm going to do is to ask for copies of those contracts. And it's surprising how few occasions I will find a complete set of documents. They're really important. The cost of putting those in place is really minor compared to the cost of having a dispute later because the terms weren't recorded correctly. Now, in terms of your business structures, um, it's important that if you're trading as a partnership, you have a partnership agreement. And if you're going into the family partnership, then that partnership agreement might just need to be pulled out and reviewed and amended if you need to. In the case of a limited company, um, then that does need to be structured properly. And there are certain formalities you have to go through. And if you're going to employ staff or if you're going to be taken on by the farming business as an employee, then employment contracts are really important. And there it's very important to put these things in writing, isn't it, including a really detailed business plan that will help you to organise yourselves and then to review that business plan over time too. Yes, that's right. It's really important that you do have a business plan and that you set the objectives between you so you all know um, what direction of travel you're heading in. There's also a, another number of documents or agreements that I'd just like to, to mention and I think are important to have in place or certainly reviewed. So once you've done the initial taking stock process with regards to the property, it may then be necessary to do some property transfers to move property around, be it into a new company or changing the name of the partners in the partnership, whatever it might be, but it may be necessary to record some changes to the property. 
Also, if you're going to be occupying land that you do not own, then it's really important that you regulate the relationship with the landowner. And that should be wrapped up in a lease or a farm business tenancy agreement as may be appropriate. And it's certainly really important that that is put into writing. Also, if you're going to need to rely upon new services coming into the property for the purposes of carrying out or uh, this new enterprise, then you may need to enter into a formal easement, which is a way of making sure you've got a formal legal right in order to um, put in a new pipe or whatever it may be for your particular business need. And then finally, something that we see and often is the cause of dispute is what's written into people's wills. Now, particularly with a farming business, we would really recommend that as much as possible, there is transparency between all of you um, within the family. Ideally, everybody will know what's in each other's wills and everybody will be clear as to what's going to happen to property and business assets when somebody dies. Unfortunately, we can often see lots of competing interests, particularly with siblings. And then when something happens with the parents um, and perhaps property doesn't get left or business assets don't get left where they're expected to or people anticipate, there can then be a, a, a huge dispute. Not only can there be a dispute, but it can actually be the downfall of, of many farming businesses because things aren't set up in the right way expectations aren't met and then it's not possible for the business to carry on. I think you see that quite often as well Esther don't you? I do Mary and you and I often work together on these issues don't we to help that family to try to find a resolution and it really can be heartbreaking for them to see a lot of hard work in the family be really lost because perhaps property has to be divided up or businesses can't operate as was intended. And a lot of that is quite often avoidable. Sometimes events will overtake you, but by putting the right planning in place and having the right agreements in place, then you can do your very best to avoid those sorts of issues. So in conclusion, we've looked at the three stages that we think are most important. We've looked at how you need to take stock of where the farm business is today and how you're going to fit into it and have those important conversations in the family. We've talked about the importance of planning if you want to instigate some change and um, really being clear about where you want to take that change and the sorts of things that you need to address that might otherwise hold you back. And finally, we've looked at the importance of reaching and recording agreements um, within the family to govern what you're going to do. It's a very exciting time to be leaving education and going into business. And there are some really simple things that you can do to make sure that, that excitement, that enthusiasm gets carried forward into a really successful business. Thanks very much, everybody. If you'd like some more information, then do please go to our website. There are some contact details at the end and do feel free to contact us to talk through any issues.